Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Adobe Summit 2019. Brought to you by Adobe. Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of Adobe Summit 2019. Here for two days, I'm John Furrier with Jeff Frick. Our next guest is Mark Lenhardt, SVP of Growth. Part of the big news is the Adobe Commerce Cloud. Mark, formerly with Magento, now Adobe, great to see you, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, it's a real pleasure to be here. So very impressive, Adobe, with their um, the creative products, it's their end user applications, really great stuff, people know it. It's a cloud service, the transformation's happened. But what's really happening too is this platform continues to get built. You guys with Magento, one of the big pieces of the puzzle. Marketo's got, the, got a big yeah. piece over there. You guys are a big part of the commerce cloud. Big news here. What's the commerce cloud about? You guys announced it here at the show. When is it going to be available? What's the features? What's it do? Tell, give us the overview. No, great, and again, thanks for having me. It's really been, uh, it's been a wild year with the Magento acquisition coming in, really folding into uh, a suite of products on the experience side that really are designed to really help uh, companies transform themselves, right, and really own the entire customer experience, all the way from discovery through to buy to through renew, as we, as we saw this morning. Uh, and commerce really fits in there nicely in the, in the buy section. Uh, and what was announced today is, uh, with Adobe Commerce Cloud, is the opportunity which is available now for, for our larger merchants and enterprises to get the core Magento platform, which our, our customers know and love, but get that in a way that's managed by Adobe, uh, is more fully integrated into the other products and services so you can deliver that full customer end-to-end uh, -end journey. Uh, and with some enhanced features, which will, will happen over time, particularly as we get to more data-driven uh, data insights uh, and, and over time Sensei and AI-powered uh, tools. You know, I love looking at um, slides because you can tell a lot by a slide, right? When they lay them out, these keynotes, especially kind of architecture slides. What I think is interesting about the Adobe Experience Cloud is it lays out nicely because you have cloud modules, if you will, or building blocks. You've got the ad cloud, the analytics cloud, the marketing cloud, and the commerce cloud. Then you got platform underneath enabling that, so a lot of nice decoupled but cohesive elements yep. to it, which really is a testament to the, kind of how they're laying out that experience cloud and experience. What is the commerce cloud's role in that? Because you guys have to be highly cohesive to do the kind of levels of commerce that's demanded in B2B now. That it's changing to more like a direct-to-consumer business model, so it's a consumer-like marketing function in a B2B context. Absolutely. How is that changing what Magento was and what's it turning into as the commerce cloud, specifically? Yeah. Well, you know, it, a, a lot of it is just really leveraging a lot of the features and functionality that Magento had, it really just fit in really, really nicely into that, that user journey, right? And so where Magento's really slotting in nicely is in that buy section, right? If you've got discovery, buy to renew, buy all the way to through renew, Magento and the core platform there really helps deliver that so that uh, our customers, whether they're B2B or, or B2C or they're trying to go direct to consumer, they're able to develop that content, that rich content, market to those customers, drive them to, uh, to Magento, enable them to transact, and then actually renew and do you know, everything from digital products to, to consumer or to uh, it, physical goods. It, it's interesting, you look at those slides too, it's, it feels like an operating environment, right? Because you got cloud, you guys are mm -hmm. on cloud. There's a lot of touch points with other pieces of the, of the system. I mean, it's an operating system, basically, almost. Not technically, but... A platform. You, you got to put platform. a platform, you got to talk to things. So data, I can imagine, is critical. Because if you want to do that journey, <laughs> and Absolutely. you're a big part of the buy piece, you got to talk to other, other pieces of the platform. Yep. How important is the data architecture? Can you explain how you guys look at that? Because now you come into the Adobe fold, they're data-centric, data's super important, we heard that in the keynote. Yep. What's the role of data in all this, and how do you see that? So it's, it's absolutely critical, as you, as you mentioned, uh, and being able to harmonize that across the platform and be able to have all of those pieces talk to each other so that you can get everything from behavioral data up front, I know what you're doing on a website, I know what you're doing on Instagram, other platforms, to I know what you're transacting, I know what you're buying, to I know what you're renewing on and what you're, you're coming back to do. Be able to pull that all together and not just pull it together in a, in, a, in a data cluster, but to be able to actually take those insights and, or sorry, take that data and develop insights out of it and then most importantly take action on it. 
Uh, and so one of the announcements we made really was around analytics, and as we pull that into Adobe Commerce Cloud, enabling our, our Adobe Analytics to have some dashboards that roll out you know, we know e-commerce really well, whether it's B2B or B2C. We know what those customers, those merchants need to look at, be able to spin up those dashboards right away so they can not only gr gather all the data, but start seeing the insights immediately. So they can take action. Mark, what, what I thought was kind of interesting is, is everyone used to think that the, the transaction was the goal, right? It's all feeding, the funnels mm -hmm. all feed to try to get that transaction. What we heard today, it, what's so important is that a transaction is just one piece of a, of a Absolutely. much broader experience, right, is, is the word, but really of an engagement and, and, and an ongoing relationship with that individual, whether it be a company or, or a single person. So I'm interested, from your point of view, you guys are all about the transactions. It's funny, it's weird it didn't happen earlier. Adobe's all about you know, the creative and the marketing and getting it up to that point of transaction. But it's really, you guys just want to get in kind of a virtuous cycle where it continues to have multiple transactions and multiple experiences that support each other as opposed to being really standalone. Yeah. No, that's, that's, I, mean, I think uh, I agree with that. I mean, the transaction's obviously really important oh, um, no, to our customers and to us. You definitely um, want it, and that's a, it's, a, it's necessary. I can't remember yeah. the word they use in the keynote. Right? It's, it's, it's definitely important, yeah. but it's not the, the pinnacle you know, kind of goal. I think goal. It, it, it's part of the entire experience, right. right? So when customers are buying today, they're buying experiences, and those experiences include the actual purchase they're making, right? The product, the digital or physical that they're making, but it includes all the way up to that, to that experience, all the content they see before then, the how they experience the brand before then, uh, and then, you know, likewise, after the transaction, right? How, how, do, how does the brand follow up and interact with the customer afterwards? Um, most of our merchants, all of our merch, all of our brands are looking to have lifelong relationships with customers, and so that entire end-to-end -end experience is important. Mark, talk about the community aspect. We covered your show, Magenta, before mm -hmm. the acquisition last year. The Cube was there. Um, we were, imp I was very impressed with. I had no idea the depth of community yeah. that you had in that company. When you guys came over, what was the feedback? What's the result? What's the plan? Can you share some update on impact of the community and the role of the community for the Commerce Cloud? Absolutely, I, I mean, the community for us is, is near and dear. I mean, it is, it is the core of, of who Magento is and was, uh, and is transferred over now to Adobe. Uh, you probably heard this morning Shantanu talking about how important, as soon as he got out on stage, how important community was, uh, the Magento community, but the broader now Adobe community. We've got about 375,000 community members. These include developers, partners, um, that are really core to the functionality. About 50% of our code is developed by, by the community and developers in the community that submit that code back to us. Um, and they're, they're the lifeblood of, of how we grow and, and support the business going forward. Talk about so. the fit between Adobe and Magento, because you mentioned something that that's, um, might be kind of a nuanced point. You have very community, a lot of open source, got a co-creation yep. on the product side. Adobe's a creative Absolutely. <laughs> entity. Talk about the fit between your culture at Magento and the Adobe culture and where they are today and where they're going. No, there's ab absolutely some overlap in our community and, and, and a lot of our partners are out helping our merchants create content, right? Create that brand experience um, and they leverage the creative side, right? And the products and the suite of uh, services uh, that the creative side of the house provides and then that feeds in directly into, uh, into driving awareness and marketing and, and sales. So, a lot of overlap there. Growth question for you or kind of more of an operational question. Um, you know, in any, any major shifts, Certainly cloud, we've seen that, it's here for, been for a long time. But as you start to see new apps and new kinds of business models emerge mm -hmm. that are continuing to transform, operationalizing new things is very difficult for an enterprise or a business. Yep. And it's sometimes culture, sometimes it's tech, I, tech IT, um, sometimes it's just people don't know what the new environment's like, <laughs> tools right. and technology. So you know, getting something operationalized that's a game changer is hard. How do you look at that? How do you guys approach that market on the go-to-market, on how you guys deal with the marketing mix? What are some of the things that you do to take something that's new, a new capability, yep. and operationalize it for a customer? Yeah, there's a couple of things. Uh, one is uh, the culture which you develop, right? So the people, uh, and, and really working to, to uh, train and develop a culture and hire the right talent that is is quite frankly just open to change, right? That you've got to be agile, because I could come in here and tell you five things you've got to do today, tomorrow it'll be totally different, right? <laughs> um, and so you've got to be, you've got to be agile and build that, build that culture of agility. Um, the other thing I'd say is, you know, find partners who will help you simplify the problem, right? It's very easy to create a lot of complexity when you've got change, um, but you know, Shantanu did a great job this morning kind of showing the dashboards that we use internally. 
Um, and that was through a lot of work and a lot of process to get that, but we, we had to simplify it down into what are the key metrics that you really need to watch. Uh, and I'd say that's the third thing, is you've got to follow data. You've got to be data driven and develop insights out of that data, because things are too fast, moving too quickly to have years to develop a gut reaction to it, right? You've, right. Got, to, you've got to see the data and you've got to see it when it happens in real time. And moving fast, gut's good, but you, you're going to apply that to data as well, so that's right. this is key. So talk if about you've the got the right platform, I mean, we, we're trying to develop very real time, relevant, uh, rich platform that you can get that data out in a way that's digestible so you can take action. How does a company take advantage of the data that they have? What are some approaches that you guys see as low hanging fruit, use cases? Some people can feel overwhelmed with data either. Yep. The number of data we heard from your uh, customer at the Dollar Shave Club talking about, there's so many, so many data points coming in from multiple directions and going out in multiple directions too, omni-channel, whatever you want to call it. How do you get, how do you, how do you get your hands on that data? Um, it's overwhelming. What's, what's some approaches people can take? Uh, so a couple things there. One is, uh, you know, decide before you even start looking at data, what do you think is important, right? So really simplify and clarify it down to what, what you need to be tracking. Um, and then uh, it's very easy to have 20 different systems that you bring in all separately and try to stitch them together. It's more important, one of the things we've tried to do with Adobe Commerce Cloud is bring together something that's already kind of pre-integrated pre, pre together to make it easier. Um, to kind of get up and running and get going, because it is, it is very difficult to, uh, to pull all that together unless you've got, you've got a framework of things working together. And then having uh, the dashboards pre-built so you can, you can get up and running. And then over time you can tweak it and customize yeah. it, but, but getting those core insights We were there. talking on camera before we started about um, operational AI versus, or operational yeah. data versus trying to boil the ocean over. And that's a that's best practice, or best practice, or approach you see. Yeah, I, mean, we, we, I call it a little bit of more operational AI, which is so many different use cases for, for, for making data-driven de decisions uh, and things that are really top of mind for merchants today. We hear a lot about one-on-one -on -one personalization, which is you know, super important, particularly as you move from being uh, computer-based e-commerce to mobile to, to yeah. voice, right? Getting that, getting that personalization right is critical. Uh, but there's a lot of things on the back end, too, yeah. that can happen, right? How do you tag pictures? How do you tag merchandise? Uh, how do you really streamline the fulfillment process so you're getting the product from the right place to the right person as quickly and cheaply as possible? One of the questions, uh, one of the comments on the keynote I thought was great from um, the engineering uh, talk, part, talk track was open data, open APIs. Mm -hmm. Very critical, we're big believers of that. Um, but as customers are challenged with first party data, they're relying on these platforms like Facebook, Instagram, other mm -hmm. things that are not necessarily being more open. <laughs> the stricter access to the data, I mean, Twitter's all got data out there, you can get that data. Harder to get LinkedIn data, it's hard to get Facebook data. Um, how, do, how do you look at this, those silos? How, do, how should customers be thinking about um, their data strategy, knowing that some of it might only be able to get through scraping or other techniques, it's, it can't maybe be reliable. So, how do you guys look at that? What's, uh, what's the approach? Do they have more first party data on their site, or is, is, it a, is there a, methodology or mechanism that they could deploy? Uh, so no silver, no silver bullet, but I think first and foremost, uh, always have to keep the customer first, right? Um, and so trust and transparency is, is of the utmost important. Uh, and so it's important, and we do this in everything we build today, is to be able to build that trust and transparency, both with our own direct customers, the merchants we may have, but also it's equally important, the trust that, th that we're building for that merchant with those, with those end customers. Uh, that, that, that has to be paramount to everything else. So, you know, when in doubt, err on the side of, of creating real deep trust and transparency with, with customers. That's awesome. Talk about the culture at Adobe. You're now part of the company from Magenta. You have a good culture there, good fit as you mentioned. Absolutely. For the folks watching here and seeing the keynote, um, the company's transformed and continues to transform mm -hmm. with cloud, with data, on the right way from our, um, our estimation. For the folks that might not be comfortable or, not, or might not know Adobe, I should say, what is it about? What's, it, what's going on at Adobe? What's, what's the magic here? There, what's the top story? There, there, is, uh, there is a lot, there's, there's a lot going on. And, and you know, the integration uh, with, with Gento over the last, uh, I guess, nine months now, it's went, went by fast, um, has been, it's been phenomenal. I, I think, as you said, not only is, has there been a strategic fit, between the product set and, and what, we're, what Adobe's trying to do overall, but a cultural fit as well. Uh, they're really dedicated to creating an environment where people can thrive uh, and being respectful of individuals and really driving and helping transform the world. And so when you've got a mission of really how do you help digitally transform, whether it's B2C or B2B, uh, B2B customers, uh, it's amazing. There's just a lot, a lot going on. Final question, what's your plans for this year? What's your goals? 
uh, grow the commerce piece, get it shipped and get it available? What's the, your objectives? Uh, you know, continue to scale up a platform which is just phenomenal. The only one in the industry that really delivers uh, great B2C and B2B experience is, uh, and really scale that up and, and help deliver, particularly for our larger mid-market enterprise customers, help them deliver on the promise that is, that is, that is the digital age. And for customers, what should they be thinking about now? Um, I, you know, it goes back to how do you really develop that, that customer journey that builds a brand, right? The most important thing is your brand and what you're doing there and how do you, yeah. customers have higher, the end user customers have higher and higher uh, uh, expectations these days and how do you really yeah. follow them through the entire customer journey. It's been the holy grail that we've been chasing for a long time now. We're getting some really visibility into it. Yeah, absolutely, it's really coming to fruition. Mark Lenhard here on theCUBE, thanks for coming on and sharing your insights, appreciate it. Thank this you very much. Live CUBE coverage here. I'm John with Jeff, with Mark. Stay with us for more after this short break.